Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at how we can set up our tools and take advantage of tool presets. Now, it seems like every conference and trade show that I go to, people are always asking me how they can set different default settings for each of their tools. And while you can set up default settings and have them be sticky, meaning that the next time you use that tool, those defaults will be there, what I like to take advantage of instead are the tool presets because that means I can set up more than one setting for a tool and quickly move back and forth between them. So let's take a look at how we would do that. First of all, I'm going to tap the C key. The C key will take me to the crop tool. I think this is a good place to start because most of us crop at different sizes for different projects, right? But there are some common sizes that we would probably like to save as presets. And you can see over here in the tool preset area that there are a number of tool presets that I've already created. Very easy to do. All you need to do is enter in the width, height, and resolution or if you just want an aspect ratio, you could just enter in the width and height. So let's say, for example, we might want to do a panorama. So maybe I want that aspect ratio to be one to three, right? So the width is going to be three for each of the one increments in height. Now, it filled in inches. You can see that right here. Why did it do that? Well, that is based on what I have my ruler set to. So let's use Command R or Control R on Windows and we'll go ahead and show our rulers. You can see that they're set to inches. If I wanted to quickly change this, all I need to do is right mouse click or on Mac you could control click in the ruler area and then you can change your units right here. So for example, if I had this set to percentage and we entered in three and tap the tab key, you can see now that it's not entering in the inches, it's entering in pixels. So let's go ahead and change that back to inches and we'll go ahead and enter three by one. Now, if I just want to keep this as an aspect ratio, you know, if I don't want to actually set up um, a resolution, I can just enter in the three inches by one inch. What Photoshop will do when you crop is instead of throwing away pixels um, when it goes to that three inch by one inches, it will just increase the actual resolution of that. So that's how you would get an aspect ratio. If you don't want that and you want a specific size, let's say for example you want this to be 6 by 18 inches, then we would just type in 18 and 6 and then the resolution of whatever um, it is that you're printing at. So let's say 300 for now. Okay, once we've set up the tool, all I need to do is either use my tool presets panel and if yours isn't showing, you go into the window menu and you can see right down here, tool presets or this icon over here in the upper left is also your tool presets where you can add a new tool preset either by clicking on the arrow there or by clicking on the new tool preset icon. Also in the lower right hand corner of the tool presets you can simply click on the new icon there. So when we click on that it asks us to name it it's up to you whether or not you want to add the crop tool at the beginning of it. Some people take that out. But let's add in the 300 ppi so that I remember what resolution this is. Click OK and you can see that it gets added in the tool presets. Now I'm only viewing all of the tool presets for the crop tool. If I wanted to see all of the other tool presets, then all I need to do is uncheck this current tool only. When I uncheck that, now I see all the presets for all of my other tools. But for right now, let's just go ahead and look at the crop tool. So you'll notice when I added this, it added it um, third in the row here because it's looking at the values here. It says it sees that this is 1024, so that comes first, then 11, then 18. But I might not want it in that order. I guess I could go in and rename it, right? We know how to rename. All we need to do is just double click on the name of the preset and then it highlights that field and we could go in ahead and type in another name. But there's another way to actually reorder these. You might try dragging them within the panel, but that is not going to work. Instead, what you need to do is use the fly out here and come down to your preset manager. It's in the preset manager where you can drag around and reorder not only your tool presets, but any of your presets. So if you want to put your swatches in a different order or your brushes in a different order, all you need to do is come into the preset manager and in here, now I can go in, for example, to my crop tool and if I want this 
entry right here, the 18 by 16 inches, to come down lower in the list, all I need to do is drag it to reorder it. And when I click Done, we can see, if I tap the C key again, that the crop tool that I just created, that tool preset, is now at the bottom of the list. So that's the way that you would reorder these. Okay, you'll also notice that from that flyout menu, here's how I would reset my tool presets if I want to go back to the standard set. I can load tool presets and I can save tool presets. Because after you've done all this work to set up all your presets, you, you definitely want to save those. I mean, I might want to take them to a different machine and load them there. So let's go ahead and I'll just show you that if I click Save Tool Presets, it's going to save them by default in the Photoshop CS5 folder in the Presets folder in Tools. You can save them anywhere, but if you save them in this location, then they'll actually appear from the flyout menu and it's very easy to select them. So that's up to you if you want to save them in this folder or you can save them anywhere else on your hard drive. Okay, I'm not going to actually save these. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to load up a set of presets that I've previously created. So let's choose the Load Tool Presets, and I'm going to go to this set right here and click Open. Now, what it's done is it's added all of the tool presets that I'd previously created. So let's go in and look at some of the other tools. I'm going to tap the M key. That's the Marquee tool, right? So you can see that I've also set up some presets here for the common aspect ratios that I like to select. If I tap the I key, we'll go to the Eyedropper tool. Now, when we change this feature, and I think it was in CS5, it might have been CS4, but when you click to sample, we started displaying the sample ring. Well, not everybody likes that. So if you don't like it, what I would do is simply turn it off and then you can create a tool preset for that. I mean, it's sticky, so if you turn it off, then you can quit Photoshop and relaunch it and that will stay off. But if you want to toggle back and forth between two states, you could make one that has, for example, a 5x5 five five average sample that shows the sampling ring, and then you could have another one that does the same 5x5 five five average but does not show the sampling ring when you click to sample a value. You could also change this so that you were just doing a point sample if you want to. So you can see any of the attributes that you can set up for any of the tools can then be saved out as a tool preset. Another tool that I've set up is the Dodge and the Burn tool. So let's tap the O key. You can see here that I've got a Dodge tool that is set to 3% in the midtones because by default the exposure value here is set to 50, which is way too heavy handed. So instead of coming in here and changing it all the time, now I can just set this up as my tool preset. By the way, something to, um, to pay attention to, with the Dodge and Burn tool, I'll go ahead and increase the size of my brush for a moment. Now, this is with the Dodge tool. So if I come over here and select the Burn tool, you'll notice that the brush size changes. It goes back to whatever size I used last with that tool. But let's switch back, and by the way, you can cycle through your tools using Shift-O, right? Anytime that you have more than one tool nested together, the shortcut here, if you add the Shift key to it, it will actually rotate you down through the tools. Um, if you don't like the Shift key, if you don't want to have to use that, if you want to just be able to tap OOO to cycle through, then all you need to do is go into your Preferences, and just uncheck this Use Shift key for Tool Switch. So that's up to you. I find that if I turn this off, I inadvertently, you know, accidentally tend to toggle through the tools, which I don't want. So I'll go ahead and leave that on. But what I was trying to tell you was, instead of going back and forth between your Dodge tool and your Burn tool, if you need to switch tools and you don't want the size of your brush to change, just hold down the Option key because the Option key toggles between the Dodge tool and the Burn tool. On the PC, that would be the Alt key, right? So if I'm painting along here and let's, um, let's actually crank this up really high so you can see what's going on. All right, so I'm dodging here. And if I hold down the Option key, now I can burn here and the brush size stayed the same. Okay, two more tools we want to look at. I want to quickly look at the Type tool. I'll tap T, and you can see that I have a variety of different type 
tool preset set up because often when I'm working with different clients, they use different typefaces. And um, most of the time when I'm doing things uh, with Adobe, I'll either want Minion or Myriad. So I've set up a bunch of presets. But you might also wonder why when I go to the type tool, why does it not have the default settings up here? So a little secret with the type tool. If you close all of your documents, and then you change the parameters up here, all of these options will be sticky. So for example, if I select the font and I decide that, you know, most often instead of using Myriad or Minion, let's say I use something like Tekton Pro. If that's what I most commonly use, if that's my most commonly used font, then I'll go ahead and select that as well as the family here. And then I'll go ahead and select the size that I use most often. And because I don't have any documents open, this will become the default typeface whenever I select the type tool. But again, if I'm going back and forth between multiple different fonts, then I probably want to use my tool presets right here so that I can quickly go back and forth. Okay, let's take a look at our last tool and that would be our brush tool because the brushes get a little bit more complex because there's more things that you can save. So here we've got our brushes panel right here, right? So I can set up any of the parameters. I can go in and change the, the hardness of the brush. We can change the brush tip shape and the angle. We can add scattering. There's all sorts of parameters we can change here. Now, once I've set this up, I can then save that as a brush preset. The brush preset, though, only saves everything that's in the brushes panel, right? A brush preset does not save all of the options across the options bar like our tool presets do. That's why you'd want to save a tool preset, right? If I use the flyout menu, new tool preset, not only will it save all of the different brush parameters here, it's also going to save all of the options across the top, plus it can include your foreground color. So if you're constantly painting with a certain color, you can include that as well. All right, I didn't do anything special here, so I'm not actually going to save it. Um, I am gonna give you just two more quick shortcuts, and that is, first of all, if you ever just wanna reset your tools, um, I don't know if this happens to you, but you know, sometimes if someone else is using your computer or if, if you're trying to do something in Photoshop and it's just not quite working and you don't know why, you know, maybe it's because maybe the mode, you've used a keyboard shortcut, you were trying to change the blend mode on the layers panel and it accidentally changed the blend mode of the tool so it's set to like multiply. Anyway, you're painting and you don't know why the tool's not working. Well, you can always reset your tools it's as easy as right mouse clicking here on the tool preset icon, or of course that would be the control key on Mac. You can reset just a single tool or you can reset all of your tools at once. That will reset all your tools to the default setting, but you will still have all of your tool presets that you can use. And finally, don't forget that under the edit menu, you can come down here to your keyboard shortcuts. And if you don't like the keyboard shortcut that we assign by default to any of the tools, you can come in here and change it. Now, I realize that all of the, the letters are already used, but I'm sure that you don't use all of Photoshop's tools with the same frequency. So for example, if we scroll down and you decide that for whatever reason, you know, you just really don't, Let's say you don't work with the 3D tools. So the, the shortcut for the 3D tools here is the K key. So all I would need to do is come up and say, you know what, I really like to switch back and forth between my brush tool and my mixer brush tool. But you can see here that my mixer brush tool and my brush tool both have the keyboard shortcut of B. Well, why don't we just take the mixer brush tool and assign that to K? Well, it's gonna tell me that it's already in use, but it's going to be removed from 3D and reassigned to the mixer brush tool. So if we accept that, now when I tap B, I'll get the brush tool, but when I tap K, I'll get the mixer brush so that I don't have to cycle through all of these other tools. Of course, I can also, using that same edit and then coming down here to keyboard shortcuts, if there's tools that are grouped together that you don't use, like let's go back to that mixer brush, let's say you only ever use the brush tool and the mixer brush tool. You can just take away the shortcuts 
from these other two tools that you don't use so that if you are using like the shift B, if you, you know, if you didn't change the, the if we didn't customize the mixer brush to K, you could simply move through two tools instead of having to cycle through all four of them. All right, excellent. That wraps up today's episode of The Complete Picture. My name's Julianne Cost. I hope you'll take advantage of the tool presets in Photoshop to make you work more efficiently. Join me again next time on The Complete Picture. Thank you.